Hey, it's Sunday night, which means it's another episode of the M Cluster. I'm Slider. I'm your host, and uh, this week we've got a full house. With us, we've got Brandon. Hi, guys. And we have Amina. Hola. And this week is Dante's pick. We're doing frailty, so we're going to go ahead and let Dante do the lead it. Hi, everybody again. So, yeah, last time you saw me, I think we were playing some games at game night, and here I am discussing another movie. This time it was Frailty. Um, I picked this one because it was um, a very unique experience the first time I saw it. I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, my mom got on DVD having no idea what it was, and it's like, okay, why'd you buy it? But who cares? I ended up watching it, and then I ended up watching it like three more times in the next um, 24 hours just to watch all the commentaries, because I do that. And, and uh, um, as Amina pointed out last week, it's the story of a guy who basically, you know, it's a normal, everyday family. Well, it's a dad and his two kids. Mom's um, died a while back. And so it's just a fairly, you know, nice, close-knit family. And then the dad all of a sudden gets a vision and says he's going to, like, kill demons and has his kids help him out, and they end up going around killing people. Um, so it's kind of a twisted, weird movie, and um, I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, Amina, you want to add on to that? Well, this is one of those movies that I think M. Night Shyamalan would have like killed somebody to try to make. Because, <laughs> you know, through most of the movie, you're, you're thinking one thing, and then all right at the end it twists around. And uh, it's not something that you really see coming. And uh, it, was, it was genuinely entertaining the whole way through. Um, you know, it has Bill Paxton and it has Matthew McConaughey in it. Um, it also, I think, brings up a lot of great um, moral issues that uh, we can talk about when we actually get into it. But I liked it. I'll watch it every time. Awesome. Now, see, I kind of disagree. I kind of saw the twist at the end coming. I as soon as he introduced himself at the beginning of the movie as Fenton Meeks, I was like, no, he's not Fenton. What made you think? Um, I think you dropped off or you muted? Uh, no, you just came back. Okay. So, you still there, Brandon? No, I didn't hear the question. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Um, what, how did you know he wasn't Fenton? I don't know. It was a couple things. Uh, one, hair color. Uh, demeanor. Okay, so you thought the child actor matched up more with um, Adam, matched up more with McCann Matthew yeah. McConaughey, and that revealed the whole thing for you? It, well, it didn't reveal the whole thing. I mean, I still wanted to know all the details on how really fucked up it is. <laughs> Okay. Um, and, and there was definite surprises that, that that particular thing just wasn't one of them. Okay. Well, you actually haven't said whether or not you liked the movie or not. No, I actually really enjoyed the movie. I was very surprised, by, especially by Bill Paxton. Oh, my God. Okay, well, it looks like uh, tonight I'm the single voice of dissent. <laughs> I, didn't, I did not like this movie. I was really? bored, bored, bored the entire time. Um, and, and I think it's, it's a little interesting because I went through and kind of did what Dante did. I watched the movie again with all the commentaries, and I developed a much greater appreciation for it as a film uh, by listening to some of the things that happened in the course of the production, uh, but it, it, the story itself just did not engage me at all. I mean, number one, it took me forever to actually watch it. Normally... You know, I'll watch a movie several times a week. We're going to talk about it. But this time, it just, it just I couldn't get myself to watch it. And when I did finally sit down and watch it, it was just, I was really uninterested. Um, That's amazing to me. Yeah, I, I don't understand <laughs> what part's not interesting about it. Well, he, What's here's not the, to like? Here's the best part is Brandon saw all this stuff coming, and the directors and writers didn't see it coming because that's not how they wrote it. Um, mm -hmm. The... The movie was actually re, uh, re-edited on the suggestion of uh, oh, big name Spielberg character Cameron, Cameron James Cameron James Cameron yes um, they uh, gave him a special uh, screening and 
he just kind of said, hey, instead of uh, doing it this way, why don't you just change this and this, that way they won't see it coming. The movie was actually written very straightforward so that you knew exactly what was going on the entire time. Yeah, like um, when I saw it, like I didn't see the twist coming at all because like for one thing, like one of the things, my favorite things about it is like you're watching this movie where all these crazy things are happening and like you hear that you see the dad saying all these things and Benton is kind of like, um, dad, not trying to be mean, but I think maybe you're not right in the head. And like everything, everybody watching the movie is thinking that character actually says like you don't have one of those like like oh my god that person's so stupid like why can't you see this like he saw everything yeah. the way a person watching the movie would see it and it's kind of like okay like you know why don't you tell somebody why don't you run away like and like all these things like like you know why did you stay you know and he's like because like, well, oh, i love my brother too much like, here's here's like, the weird question to it though i mean the way Bill Paxton's character explains the visits and everything is that, you know, they can't be caught by authorities or would blur their face or something to that effect. God, that happens. For us, or blind us for them. Yeah, it, it, that, that happens throughout the whole thing. Yeah, but, like, you don't really know for sure it's happening because, like, when you just think, okay, he's crazy, and he thinks it's going to happen, and you're lucky he got away with it, because they only show you, like, two or three times. Yeah, but, um, I mean, it, it's... All right, especially at the end with, like, Matthew McConaughey, when he basically got away with it. Oh, um, well, yeah, that's at the very end where they're revealing everything. But th that's what I mean. The ending makes you wonder, like... All right, I mean, I, I know this guy's crazy, but at the same time, why... Does it work that way? Why is his face blurred? Why can no one remember him? Oh, because the twist at the end is it's all real. Like, the dad was right. They were actually demons. Like, the twist is, like, it's not the world we actually live in. It's just very close, and it's the world where everything the dad was saying was actually true. And I kind of want to revisit what I said, though, because um, – when I say I was bored, I, I wasn't. The story didn't capture me at all. But this is a really well-made film. It's a well-acted <laughs> film. The, the, the film actually fires on all cylinders. I have no complaints about the way the film was made. I just was bored. I just didn't like the story itself. Well, see, um, like the first time I watched this movie, it was like 2 a.m. and I was flipping channels, and I just happened to catch it like the very beginning. And it was one of those movies that I like I had to sit there and finish it. It just drew me in. So I had, like, so the, the exact, exact opposite, opposite reaction. Opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, mean, just, I pretty much had the exact opposite. Like I said, it, even outside of me being like, oh, that's, you know, that's Adam, not Fenton, I still was just enthralled with watching the whole story unfold. Oh, that, that was the other thing I was going to point out. Uh, the similarities between the child actor and Matthew McConaughey were unintentional. So that, again, that wasn't something they did on purpose to say, you know, oh, oh here's the, you know the surprise twist, and it sort of made it helped. A, a sense all along. It sure did, um, and, and they discussed that a lot in the commentary. Um, but I think it's really funny that you're saying it's like, oh, I saw all this stuff coming when the people that made the film didn't see it coming. <laughs> then, yeah, I actually. Yeah, that doesn't um, speak volumes for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean, know. You're see, like either looking for a twist, or you just like it's like. Maybe at the end, it's like, oh, yeah, I totally saw that. When you didn't, you're just lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah, see, I never try to find, like, the twist. I never try to figure shit out for the end of the movie. I like to be surprised. Me well, I've, I've seen this happen in so many different other stories where, you know, someone is explaining something and they supposedly have a brother or a friend and it's always really them. See, even with that mindset i don't think it quite held true because one of the things you notice is like when he's telling the story it's all from Fenton's perspective like you really don't see adam much like you know he's always there as a brother and everything but like the, he describes how he fell and you know the whole thing about digging the hole and like everything that happened to fenton was what happened that's the story he was telling he wasn't even he didn't even know what was going on with adam half the time so to actually think Adam's telling a story when he wasn't even there for half of it is kind of like, why would you really think that? Yeah, they also, uh, again, back to the filmmaking, because that's the part I actually enjoyed. Um, when they were going back and forth between the present and the flashback, they did a lot of uh, imagery in such a way that 
they would dissolve from one character to the other, and it was always Fenton to McConaughey until the very end. And that when they do the big reveal, then they do a fade and let you know, oh, this is Adam. So psychologically, they're they're throwing it out there, saying like, hey, yeah. these two characters are connected. And, so and the I, fact I, that you, I, I saw that. I don't know why. I I, I don't know why funny. I yeah, thought like, that in the beginning. Hmm. You've got a really weird mind. I didn't, and I didn't dwell on it throughout the movie either. It's just like I saw him. He said that, and I was like, oh, that's that's probably Adam. There's, it's going to be a twist or something. Okay. And then I didn't really. Well, think at least it didn't it. matter to you, and you enjoyed the rest of the movie despite <laughs> that. Although I don't know, I think not knowing may would make it better because you're thinking the person in the police station is telling the truth until the very end. Well, yeah, he did tell the truth. Yeah, he didn't lie. Technically, that's true. <laughs> except where he said his name, like I'm Adam Meek. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm that's Adam true. Meek. <laughs> Um, but what did you think but, uh, of Bill Paxton? Bill Paxton's performance is actually pretty good. I mean, I bought that he was batshit crazy. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think that was exactly what he was trying to put out. Because, you know, like you said, that it, that's kind of the whole tone of the movie. Is like we're seeing everything from Fenton's perspective. And Fenton's like, yeah, there's something wrong with you, dude. Um, and uh, even towards the end of the film when uh, – the, you know, the big climactic scene happens, and Fenton says the line, if you're ever going to destroy me, promise me you'll bury me in the uh, Rose Garden. I did not immediately take that to be that he was copying to being a demon. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I didn't I either. Thought, I, I thought that was him going, hey, you know what? You're batshit crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what point, I thought. You're just going to come kill me. <laughs> well, that's one of the things about this movie, though, is that you're even at the end you're not really sure if it's actually like a religious demon thing or it could be shared telepathy or it could be shared psychosis. It, it's kind of open. I think it, it, actually it, it could the commentary the actually um, discussed that a bit. And um, one of the things that they did on purpose is like, because they were actually trying not to leave it open to tell you like, yeah, this is real. Because when they went to um, the final scene where Powers Booth and you see what happened with him and his mother or whatever, um, it zooms in on him, like in his eye, so it's like you know you're going in his head um, to show like, and when you're touching, like it zooms in on the person. So it kind of that was kind of a tool they were using to try to say this is actually what is in this person's head and who they actually are. See that's kind of. But see, I've seen that on X Men, where like the telepathist can touch somebody and find out everything about them. Right. So it actually is real. There. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Like that wasn't real. So you're saying it's real. I don't like, know. I, I the way I was seeing it was that the person who is the you know demon slayer did, does indeed see this, but it's just a figment of their imagination, and you're seeing what they are seeing. Yeah, see, it could be any of that. But these people actually did all these horribly horrible things. How would he see it? If how it's do just we their have? Imagination? How do we have proof of that? It could be all made up. Yeah, I would say outside of, of him seeing it in his head, and if he's batshit crazy, people she see shit to begin with. Um, well, that's what I was trying to say with when it zooms in into the demon, like that's saying this is real. That, that, that doesn't that doesn't show that it's real. That just shows us what, what the they guy want thinks happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, then I guess the. <laughs> Movie makers did not succeed in that point because that's what they were going for, according to the commentary. Yeah, I mean, and I understand that they 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 wanted to go through the whole like you know angel demon thing, and and that that's what makes it a great movie. It's just one of those things that's like you can actually interpret that a lot of ways if you really wanted to. Well, I kind of want to talk about uh, Matt O'Leary's performance. That was the character that played Fenton. That little boy was a good actor. Um, yeah, he I was. Mean, he was very convincing in. You know, when he's showing concern for his father, when he's worried about, you know, it's like, well, maybe you're kind of crazy. Um, and then when he finally makes that switch to, like, I am not going to let you bully me into, you know, pretending I believe this. I'm going to fight you all the way. You know, and that defiance between him and Bill Paxton's character was really just, it was very tense. That was really a well done story. I found that more interesting than the whole God thing. Um, but, uh, 
you know, the, the dynamic between them was very, very well put. And they kept saying that, uh, that the, the character that played Adam, or sorry, the actor that played Adam was uh, a lot of com comedic relief. And I never saw that. I, didn't, I never laughed once during this movie. I didn't think any of it was funny. Um, but uh, the, a lot of the stuff that the little boy, uh, Adam, you know, the younger brother Adam, said was meant to be comedic. And, like, you know, when he came up and he says, like, oh, you know, I have – God gave me a list too. Um, and we need to kill these demons. One of them's a bully at school. Yeah, I didn't find that comedic. I found that sad. Yeah, so did I. Um, and And, and – I felt that way a lot. Is, is that not the what they were going for? No, they were trying. To, they were trying for comic relief in that that scene. That's weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. But I mean, I remember the scene. I don't remember hearing that that was supposed to be comedy. But, yeah, because yeah. that's not. Yeah, that's not funny at all. Yeah, Bill Paxton <laughs> makes a lot of references in the commentary of things that were supposed to be funny that were not funny at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> Well, this was Bill Paxton's first uh, directorial debut, I think, right? Yes, yeah. yes, it was. And I think he did a good job. I mean, I, I, I agree. agree. I this think, was... given but, that, let's say, all of these little things were supposed to be different ways, I'm glad they didn't turn out that way because I actually enjoyed it the way it is. Well, uh, and to explain to you uh, what, what I meant by that was uh, all of the, the visions that they show you at the end, the big reveal of the movie – you actually saw those things as they were happening. You didn't see, they didn't hide the reaction. So what you were saying earlier about, uh, you know, what you're seeing is this person having a hallucination. Um, in, in, in the original cutting of the film, they actually showed you what he was seeing. Um, so it was more of a straightforward, you know, I'm a demon killer, this is a demon, now I'm seeing their sins kind of thing. Um, yeah, they're, they're and, sins. Yeah, you yeah. never actually thought the dad was crazy um, in the original sh cutting. Right. Um, and, and the other issue is the use of the word demon. Um, they never really clarify. You know, it's like, yeah, these people were bad people, but, you know, everyone sins, right? So are we they, all possessed? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, are we all demons when we sin? Or, you know, are those actually, you know, those people actually demons? Just, you know, are they broken or are they just something else? They, they don't really clear that up. They, they make you, like, in the discussion, they're like, oh, you know, these aren't people, they're demons. But they never really specify what made them a demon other than they did really bad things. Yeah. Well, I think he said, like, um, I believe he was trying to say they were, like, never actually people somehow. It's like... Um, these aren't people, they're demons. Although that also kind of doesn't make sense in a way because towards the end, like um, the angel told Bill Paxton that his son was a demon and he didn't believe it and he couldn't kill his own son, right? Um, and that's why he put him in the hole and he ended up dying because he didn't do what, you know, the vision told him to do. But later when it was time for Adam to kill, like you're like, oh, I couldn't kill him earlier because he wasn't on my list yet. It's like, okay, but he was on his dad's list, like, how many years ago? Like, why couldn't you kill him at any point if he's... Because the angel didn't command him. Yeah, I uh, thought that was a little weird. It's like, okay, like, I think you don't go from, like, being a demon to not being a demon, then being a demon again. And, like, and if you're killing a demon, wh why does it matter when you do it? If you know that person is a demon. Now, what I would have liked to have seen would have been like a gag reel where they shot an outtake of the angel talking to Bill Paxton after he died. He's like, I fucking told you that kid was a demon. <laughs> but did you listen? No, you know, I'm only an angel, you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm only divine. It's like, you don't need to take what I say to heart or anything. You know? um, but uh, um, they did have several uh, different kind of uh, undertones of this, like, you know, the whole Cain versus Abel thing. Uh, between the two brothers, you know, that was very strong towards the end. Um, they uh, talked about when they locked the uh, character Fenton in the cellar. Um, he's in there for seven days and they pull him out. Uh, the way he cradles him in his arms is very similar to a painting of when uh, Mary is holding Christ after they take him off the cross. Um, the, the, one of the things they did a lot, you know, they, caught, they uh, called him the God's hands killer. There's a lot of hand imagery. Uh, in the movie when he's talking. Um, Matthew McConaughey's character, this is one of the things 
where it was kind of like a giveaway, but you don't catch it right away, is he wouldn't let the uh, agent touch him. You know, when he reached out to shake his hand, he handed him the picture. When he tried to, you know, grab his head to help him get in the car, he's like, nope, I got it. You know, so it isn't until the very end when uh, he tries to hit him with the gun, which, you know, it's a gun. Shoot the fucker. But, um, uh, you know, is when you see him finally touch him, and then you see the visions, and that's kind of like the beginning of the whole big reveal uh, thing. Um, and and I, I can't say this enough. This movie's really well made. <laughs> it's just I was not interested. <laughs> well, this movie was a lot of there was a lot of child abuse. This is what the whole movie was. <laughs> there um, was less than there could have been. That's all kinds of abuse. That's yeah. <laughs> one and uh, one of the makes, things. That, go ahead. I was to say it makes you wonder. Like both kids turned out to be serial killers, <laughs> one way or the other. Both of his kids did, and it makes you wonder. You know, would would Fenton have have gone bad if his dad hadn't gone nuts? Well, I think, in, like well, in theory, he didn't go nuts. He was killing demons and he was ridding the world of evil. And well, if like, you watch your dad kill a bunch of people and for they're God, not people, they're demons. Okay, well, that's no, cool. Fenton. <laughs> <They're still people. laughs> Fenton ended up killing people, though, not demons. Okay, so would, he, a, would he have been a murderer if he had not have seen all that? Well, there, there's definitely a turning point, and it's when they lock him in the cellar. Because yep. when they pull him out of the cellar, he says, I saw God. And the way the scene plays out, you're meant to think, it's like, oh, he's saying that so he can get out of the cellar. But I think that's the moment where he realizes, I'm a demon. Hmm. Well, we all have moments like that. <laughs> One thing that was actually kind of um, interesting, I thought, which Jose did not find interesting at all, that was in the commentary, is that also in the original cutting, um, Fenton was actually afraid of the dark. And so locking him in a cellar for seven days was had added cruelty to it, and which is why they actually took it out. Because, as you mentioned, all the child abuse that's in it, they decided, you know what, that's enough. We don't need more. <laughs> so they, they kind of held back a little bit there. And I was kind of like, no, I wish they would have left it in there. In fact, you know, I wish they would have hired an actor who was actually afraid of the dark. You know? It's like, get your ass down there! <laughs> and then actually have him in there for seven days. Like, you're totally going to do this method. That's right. <laughs> you know, Uta Hagen. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... so again, and I don't want to keep sounding repetitive, this film is a great piece of filmmaking and there are lots of people who enjoyed it obviously the three of you did and, and when I say I didn't like it I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this film it's just it just wasn't my cup of tea it wasn't for me you know? anything that you think um, would have made it better besides actually leaving in the um, afraid of the dark thing anything like would have made it more interesting to you or uh, I just think the subject matter is not you know, you know, you know. I've studied a lot of religion, and this just really came across as really, you know, religious zealot nutcase kind of story that I, I just don't find very interesting. I know, I guess, I know a little too much about it, um, and I've known people that you know think that way. Um, so just you know, maybe my life experience is just you know prepped me to not like that story. I don't know. Okay. Um, but, well, it would have been way more interesting if when Bill Paxton dies, he says, game over, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny you say that, because uh, he actually put a lot of effort into not making any parallels between this and Alien. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, but one of the interesting things I thought was uh, they were talking about the transitions in the film and how they tied you, again, kind of psychologically, uh, between what was going on in the present and the flashbacks. Um, and uh, they actually kind of did something that I want to try. Um, they uh, took you into the Rose Garden at one point, and they're trying to show you that it's this dilapidated, dilapidated, dilapidated place now, and uh, just you know overgrown with weeds and whatnot. And they show you this broken ceramic angel on the floor, um, which I think is also kind of symbolic. Um, but then when the camera angle comes back up, they're back in the past. Um, 
So, you know, I just think a lot of that camera work, a lot of the uh, cinematography that went into this movie, the car ride, the car ride was all done using what's called the poor man's process. They were on a soundstage and they had crew shaking the car and, you know, walking by wrapped up in, in black sheets with flashlights, you know, to, to be uh, headlights. Uh, and they did a really good job. When I heard that, I was like, no way. And I looked at it again. I'm still like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> it looked too real. Um, they actually had two cars. And one of them had the grill between the front seat and the back seat. The other one didn't. And for some reason, the car with the grill had to go back to the shop. Um, and they couldn't finish filming in it. So they actually had to make a cutout of a grill and then shoot light through it for the close-ups of Matthew McConaughey's face to keep the continuity, and they did a wonderful job. I mean, there was never a point where I thought, oh, this is camera trickery, or, you know, um, I really didn't put a lot of thought into whether or not the car was actually moving, but the way that they did it worked out really well. Um, yeah, because I mean, you never thought it wasn't. Correct. And um, that shot you were talking about where they had, where they're walking into the Rose Garden in the present, and then they go back in time. Like, I was surprised to know, like, that actually was not any sort of special effect or anything. That was just straight up built that way and just clever movement of the camera. Yes. Like, that was actually one shot when they did that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow. I figured they must have just, you know, did a little fancy something in post-production. But, nope. It's like, that surprised me more than anything. Yeah, no, for it being the di directorial debut of Bill Paxton, I think he did a wonderful job. I wish I would have liked this movie more. I wanted to like <laughs> this movie after hearing all the background information on it. Um, but I just, uh, I've seen it probably four or five times now, and uh, I, I don't think I'll be watching it again. Um, it's, it's a great movie to talk about as a, as a film, but the story's just not, not in it for me. All right. Well, I think you know I liked it. You know what I mean? I liked it, right? <laughs> I yeah, liked I, it. I liked it. I thought it was I a very it. good thriller. I mean, Matthew McConaughey makes some shit movies, but this is not one of them. <laughs> oh no! Again, this was this was a great piece of film. You know, okay. fun thing to do if you ever like having a bad day is to try to read everything in the voice of Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> okay. All Instant right. Better day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like that dude's voice. I'll watch him in any crap movie he makes just because of that. <laughs> Not for just the the um, obligatory shirtless scenes for no particular reason. No, I don't even care. Okay. Like, that does not this movie help had a, it too. That does not help a bad movie to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think we uh, established our feelings on this one. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, uh, get Dante to pick the next movie. Well, that was fast, wasn't it? Okay, so, yeah, here's the bingo cage thingy. Let's see what we got here. You're going to drop the ball. Not this time. I'm firing all cylinders, except I don't know where my list of movies is. No, okay, oh. I found it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> all right. There we go. Can you see that? Is it nope. clear? No. How about now? Okay, well, it says 17. So you have to trust me on that one. Let's see. 17, 17. No, no, no. She's only 17. Really? Nobody's going to do the chorus? Come on. Yeah, no. I don't even know that song. Pedal okay. bear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys read that? Nope. Oh, okay. hey. The Dark All Crystal. Right. Oh, yes. The Dark Crystal. I love that movie. All it right. is a good movie. Um, looking forward to that. I think that's mine, right? Yes. I have no. it on my list, too. Oh, that's oh, amazing. Oh, sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is actually... Um, officially listed as Amina's, but I think Jose had it in there. Or well, we can have it. It'll be Jose's then. No, it, it, it'll be yours. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we can fight it's over it. <laughs> yeah, like, we like limiting how many movies he has in the selection. So, like, if you can actually steal one of his, that just benefits everybody. Okay, well, that one's mine then. No, I think we need to do, like, an old-fashioned, you know, original Star Trek uh, death match. Like, dun 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 <laughs> Dude, I would take you down. <laughs> I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Um, all right, well. Mad superpowers. Uh, <laughs> not you, so you wouldn't be the Gorn? No. <laughs> all right, so uh, next week's The Dark Crystal. Uh, looking forward to that on behalf of uh, Brandon, Dante, Amina, myself, the cat. That's a wrap. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. 
don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Or if you want to follow along with our antics when we're not in front of the camera, you can check us out on our social media pages on Facebook, Google+, or Twitter by searching for The M Cluster. Or you can leave comments in the field below. Or you can send us an email or give us a call. Heck, you can even write us a letter. Or you can buy us dinner. Or you can buy us a car. That would be awesome. Or you could send us on vacation. Or get us an Emmy. Ooh, a Tony. If you could get us a Tony, that would be awesome.